The West Coast trials this year were very exciting to watch, but we're not going to talk about the false reaps or even the buggy choke that's sending J-Rod into ADCC. What we've done in the past and what we're going to do in this video here is listen to what advice Gordon Ryan gives Placido and Big Dan here so we can get a glimpse into the mind of Gordon Ryan and use that to improve our games. So with that said, let's get into the video. Now in a gi, Keenan has talked about how he likes to start laying on his back in a supine position. So when his opponent grabs his pants, Keenan's able to take a grip on their sleeve. And when you have a gi on, someone grabbing your sleeve can be very hard to deal with. But without a gi, it's going to be relatively easy for them to free their wrist. Because of this, a lot of people are going to play a seated guard instead of a supine guard. So it's important for us to understand how to address this. So Gordon tells Placido to control the head and push the shoulders. And I believe number one, this prevents them from first getting a good connection to you while either seated or standing and then dropping into a supine position to enter into their attacks. And then two, as you can see here, as Placido is grabbing the head and pushing the shoulders, it forces his opponent into that supine position. And we can hear Gio Martinez telling Keith Krikorian to do the same thing. So when we're approaching a seated guard, one strategy I saw being used quite a bit in the trials is to first push their shoulders, threaten a guard pass so that they fall to a supine position. And as they bring their knee into their chest to prevent the guard pass, you can use this opportunity to enter into the legs. Now it's not that simple because there's a lot of things our opponent can do from a supine position. And a lot of opponents will elect to go supine so they can go to things like X guard and start to work their attacks from there. But the idea is once our opponent is going into forms of guard, they're going to be extending their legs. And by extending their legs, they leave them vulnerable. And in the past trials, we've seen Placido backstep off of this X guard right into a heel hook. And he tried to do that in this trials as well, but his opponent did a good job of defending. So then Placido goes back to controlling the head and pushing the shoulders to drop his opponent into that supine position. And as his opponent tries to recover, he uses that opportunity to try a heel hook. Now, if your opponent tries to recover by putting their knee up by your hip, this gives you the opportunity to try the heel hook. But what if they recover with their knee much lower, like by your shin area? Something similar to a knee on belly situation where our knee is higher than our opponent's knee. What could we do from there? You can drop the pseudo hack if you want to or pummel underhook in. So we heard Gordon say you can drop to pseudo half if you want to and pummel an underhook in. And what this would look like is we're trying to pass the guard, but our opponent is bringing their leg low. So instead of going for a heel hook, we go for something called pseudo half by driving our knee over the top of our opponent's leg. This gives us time to pummel in our underhooks and work to pass the guard. So instead of saying, screw it, I can't pass the guard, I'm going to try a leg lock, we should be using leg locks to enhance our guard passing. And that is something that I really saw used in this ADCC trials, where we put pressure on a guard pass, and if they don't go down to a supine guard, you can take their back. So a lot of people are going to put their back on the ground, which prevents you from exposing their back. And if they try to recover their guard by bringing their knee up by your hip, you can go into a heel hook. And if they bring their knee lower, you can pin their leg to the ground going into pseudo half and pummeling your underhooks and working your guard passing. When we're passing the guard, one of our primary goals is to get chest to chest to our opponent. One way to achieve this chest to chest position is as your opponent uses their hand to prevent themselves from going supine, you can shoot in that body lock pass. And just keep in mind that as your opponent is doing all sorts of crazy things from bottom, a lot of times if you defend this, you can find yourself in a chest to chest position. But the thing I wanted to focus on in this section of the video is dealing with a situation where our opponent is using their knee to prevent us from getting chest to chest. And a lot of times from this position, they'll start to build height by coming up on their elbow. And this is a great opportunity for us to punch in this near side underhook. 
And this near side underhook is something I saw being used quite a bit in this ADCC trials. And we see Gordon use it here. And as his opponent is trying to recover that near side underhook, Gordon takes that opportunity to achieve that chest to chest position. And we can see the near side underhook being used here. And Gordon tells him to bring his head to the floor and to start tripoding. Now, once we start tripoding, we have to be aware that our opponent has the ability to pummel their butterfly hook in and start to off balance us. And especially if we have that traditional far side underhook, it's going to be relatively easy for them to off balance us and recover their guard. But having the near side underhook and walking our legs towards that far side makes it very, very difficult for them to even pummel that butterfly hook in to begin with. And even if they do, it gives us the ability to post with that far side arm, making it difficult for them to off balance us. And then from there, we can work to free our knee or even punch in a second underhook while we progress to mount. And having two underhooks is always nice because it gives us the ability not only to pass to mount, but to pass to either side of our opponent's body. So now we find ourselves mounted on our opponent with two underhooks and we can make life very miserable for them. Now something very interesting happens. We're mounted with two underhooks, but our opponent ends up putting us back in half guard. And the way ADCC works is that for a six minute match, the first three minutes there is no points and the second three minutes there is. So yes, we lost the mount, but we lost the mount very close to when points are gonna start. And this is something that Gordon encouraged his team to take advantage of. While approaching the three minute mark where points kick in, Placido finds himself mounted but struggling to pin his opponent's arm down to the mat. So you heard Gordon say, if you pummel in an underhook, you can put yourself back in half guard and at least score from there. And this is exactly what Placido does. So although we're always seeking a submission, you do have to play the game, right? And if you're losing mount, make sure you're losing mount with an underhook and you're setting yourself up for a relatively easy pass that will get you points. So going back to our situation here with Big Dan, yes, we lost the mount, but we lost the mount with a near side underhook. So we're putting ourselves in a very dominant passing position to capitalize on it when points kick in. But we'll see here our opponent starts to cover our mouth and restrict our breathing. And it forces us to let go of that near side underhook to address the problem. And our opponent does a great job of not letting us re-pummel our near side underhook, which ultimately results in them recovering their guard. So I do think this near side underhook is very underutilized and is starting to gain more traction in the game today. And you'll see Keith Kerkorian using the near side underhook here. And as they run out of room and get reset, the ref doesn't let him have that near side underhook. He gives him the far side underhook. And Keith is not very happy about that, right? He understands the value of having this near side underhook. And I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of that in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There was a lot that happened in the trials, and I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet. So I know we didn't get to cover a lot that happened, but I hope you guys learned something from the video, and I'll see you in the next one.